I never take the freedoms that the United States has given me for granted, and I've used it to help uh, to bring human rights um, to Afghanistan and any other dark area in the world. I went to Afghanistan to bring peace in the middle of war, to put light where it was black. I got kidnapped, I had gun pointed in my head so many times I, I can't, don't remember telling you. Um, extortion was rampant. It was hell on earth. And they tried to kill me every day. But the cause of freedom is so much more greater than anything that to be afraid of. All right, ladies and gentlemen, that uh, very beautiful and incredible uh, lady uh, is uh, sitting uh, right here in the studio. She is Sonia Nasseri Cole, Cole uh, director, writer, producer. She that was there uh, in California on Monday at uh, the Penn USA Center winning the Freedom to Write Award. She, you heard the story, kidnapped, uh, threatened, you know, gun to the head, the whole thing. Um, and her story is an incredible one. She is the director, writer, producer, and stars in uh, the uh, highly acclaimed movie Black Tulip, uh, which uh, is all about going back to Afghanistan and trying to realize a dream. She did that in the face of the threats from the Taliban. Uh, she has a brand new book, which I didn't even know about. She brought with her, Will I Live Tomorrow, which I, I, is one woman's mission to create an anti-Taliban film in war-torn Afghanistan, and I, I hold that uh, in my hand. That's available at bookstores, Barnes and & Noble, and, and all over. And uh, Sonia, so so nice to have you here, I can't tell you. Good evening, thank you. Pleasure uh, have, being here. Now you, you uh, first of all, could we start uh, with a little bit about your, your background uh, when you left uh, Afghanistan, and then and then your your letter that you wrote, which I find to be an, uh, just an another amazing part of your story, that you wrote to President Ronald Reagan at the time, and what it led to. Um, I left Afghanistan after the Soviet invasion of 1979. I came to America, and um, realizing how incredible America is, and with lots of dreams. I one day saw a documentary uh, that showed a woman barefoot uh, holding two babies in, in three foot snow walking. It just devastated me and I wanted to do something about it. So as a teenager, what do you do? You write a letter to the President of the United States, the most powerful man in the world, Ronald Reagan. Guess what? He wrote back to me, and he called me to come for a meeting at the White House. When I met uh, the president, um, my life that day changed because he said to me, one person can change the world. You want to be that person. He said, I believe in everything you said. And uh, we need the Stinger missile to approve for Afghanistan. And it's very difficult to pass it through the Senate. Why don't you gather people to testify in front of the Senate and get the Singer missile approved? Right. I did that, and in that process, it was the end of the Soviet Union, as you know. And and this was as a teenager you were doing this. That that is that is amazing. And and what what did it say in the letter? I mean, what what did you say in the letter it was that? An eight, eight page letter. It's a young girl writing from heart and passion, and you know we believe so much when we are young and innocent, though I still believe all those things. No, nothing she, nothing sure. has changed no, for it me. It must have been a very uh, powerful and intriguing letter for him. In the letter and, yeah. with, you know, handwritten. <laughs> it was uh, from the heart. And, and so that Basically, it was what, what's happening in Afghanistan right, is not time. justified. Yeah. And why don't we do, why, why doesn't the West do anything about it? But because when human rights is violated anywhere, it's violated everywhere. Why can't you do something about it? That was my letter. And then he used you uh, to testify. You yeah. testified. And, and, uh, and as you say, the, the end of the Soviet Union uh, soon, uh, soon ensued. Um, when do you become, or just, I guess from that point, you continue to be an activist, comp continue to be uh, involved in, in the fight for human rights? Absolutely. I mean, that day, my mission for life was clear, that everything I want to do from this 
from that moment on was to fight for human rights in Afghanistan and, and raise money for the refugees because what was happening in Afghanistan was really genocide and people were dying in these camps in Pakistan. There was a disaster happening. So I started um, to help raise funds through Afghanistan World Foundation and with President Reagan and with President Bush uh, Sr to do these major events uh, with my foundation that we founded, Afghanistan World Foundation. Right, and, and AfghanistanWorldFoundation.org, uh, people should check that out, and it's a, it's yes. an amazing website with uh, uh, amazing uh, posts, and, and uh, f people can find out also a lot about you personally and what you do, but, all right, so so Afghanistan, of course, changed. Of course, you know, it, it, we were, we were uh, on the side of uh, uh, the Taliban, if you will, against the Russians, uh, and then, of course, the Taliban started harboring al-Qaeda, culminating with the 9-11 uh, attack. And our, our position towards Afghanistan certainly changed. And we went into Afghanistan to, to try to rid uh, the Taliban wouldn't hand over al-Qaeda. So we went in, and, and here we still are in Afghanistan. So how did your emotions change? How did, how did that, all that change, you know, your point of view towards your, your former country? I see it a little bit differently okay, sure. than, than you saw it. <clears throat> I think we went to help uh, Massoud, General Massoud, which was had nothing to do with the Taliban, and he was the antithesis of Taliban. Taliban didn't exist at that moment in time. It was General Massoud who got shot through a camera by Osama bin Laden just before 9-11. <clears throat> And the Taliban came after he was shot, after Osama bin Laden came to Afghanistan. I mean, they literally hijacked Afghanistan and hijacked Islam. And these cowards under the shield of women, children, and Islam are doing these dirty deeds to destroy uh, everything that matters in Afghanistan, especially women's rights. It's been so violated in my country that is beyond comprehension. Um, I truly believe that uh, Afghanistan will be free when the women of Afghanistan are free. That's 50% of the population that is silenced. And there are some incredible minds there. Well, and of course, it's not just Afghanistan uh, that, uh, you know, that is victimized by the uh uh, the, the Taliban-like groups uh, in the Middle East. Uh, I point to Pakistan, and I point to. Uh, let, let me let me just change for a second and ask you. There's a uh, the story of uh, um, Malala, um, who just uh, won an award for her peace work. She did not win the Nobel Prize, and I wonder how you feel about that. I wonder. There's been some uh, uh, commentary as to whether or not the 16-year-old girl, who by the way wants to be prime minister of Pakistan, I heard her interviewed on one of the cable stations. I could not believe what was coming out of this amazing. She's girl's incredible. mouth. I couldn't believe it. She is absolutely incredible. And by the way, she, we should tell people she was shot uh, by the Taliban. Absolutely. Uh, and she recovered, and uh, now she's speaking out, and she's not shying away, and she's like, uh, like, like she, she's just a uh, one in a million. I was present at the UN session when she was speaking, and it was breathtaking. This girl is really a very, very brave girl. Now, is she somebody that could, you know, she's not from Afghanistan, but is she somebody who could propel your dream of? Of, of human rights for women in your country through her country or through all countries? Absolutely, because the enemy is the same. I mean, Taliban uh, originated from Pakistan and Yemen, and as, as you all know, uh, not one uh, Talib is Afghan born, uh, and they are educated in these madrasas, uh, in which I have visited, and it's horrifying to watch these little boys and uh, being educated in, in Quran and repeating the same thing over and right, over again. Right. They don't even understand Quran. They can't even read. But they're indoctrinated and, from that young absolutely. age and that's all they know. That's all they yeah, know. Yeah. And uh, to me, Taliban are not Muslims at all because everything they do is the antithesis of Quran. There is 1.5 peaceful Muslims in the world. That you, and then there is this parasite called Taliban that is not even a half of a half of a percentage that has hijacked the religion. I don't understand why the Islamic world doesn't join the Western and the um, world and Israel to fight uh, to, to to denounce the Taliban as Muslims. Yeah, well, it's not. It's of course it's not only the Taliban that has 
you know, uh, have their radical interpretation of the Quran or Islam or whatever. It's uh, unfortunately uh, uh, this, uh, much greater than that small percentage of people in Afghanistan, perhaps. But it's it's a worldwide uh, movement, unfortunately. I want to I want to pray. Could you say another segment? Because I want to I want to focus on uh, on the movie Black Tulip. Ask you when you decided to make it and what it was like making it. Because from your acceptance speech at the uh, Penn uh, USA Center. Uh, getting the Freedom to Write Award, where you talked about kidnapping threats and murder threats and guns to the head, and and uh, you know what made you do that? We'll talk about it. We're talking to Sonia Nasseri Cole, uh, director, writer, producer, founder of Afghanistan World Foundation dot org, and uh, the um, the um, person who put out that wonderful movie, directed, wrote, produced, starred in um, Black Tulip. We'll talk about that when we come back right here on the Steve Malzberg Show on Newsmax TV and.